Hi there, I'm Erica Fee, the producer of the KeyBank Rochester Fringe Festival, held each September in downtown Rochester, New York. In this Fringe 101, I'll tell you a little bit about where Fringe Festivals came from, what the Rochester Fringe is like, and take you through the steps to submit an application to perform your show at the Fringe. Fringe Festivals started in 1947 in Edinburgh, Scotland. That year, eight groups who were not programmed by the Edinburgh International Festival decided to turn up anyway with their sets and their costumes and their props and put on their shows at venues they had arranged themselves, like lecture halls at the University of Edinburgh and rooms above pubs. A reviewer was trying to figure out what to call these shows that weren't part of the actual festival, so he nicknamed them the Festival Fringe, but he also thought that it wouldn't happen again because people couldn't be that organized two years running. Well, it's now grown to be the largest arts festival in the world and has resulted in the creation of around 250 festivals worldwide, with about 50 in the United States. Rochester Fringe is a bifurcated festival, which is a mix of festival curated shows and venue curated shows. The festival curates several major acts to draw focus to the fringe and draw people downtown. But the vast majority of shows are curated by the venues themselves, and these are the venues that you can send your application through to. Our festival has these previously mentioned curated shows, including Friday and Saturday on the Fringe, which are huge public spectacle performances held in downtown Rochester. Previous spectacles have included the aerial dancers of Bandaloop, the renowned giant inflatables of Plastici en Volant, and the high energy of Masayoki. The festival also has a central hub called One Fringe Place at the corner of Main Street and Gibbs Street. At One Fringe Place, you can find the Spiegel Tent, which is an imported Belgian music hall. Outside of the Spiegel Tent, you can find the Spiegel Garden and an urban oasis featuring food trucks, a bar, performances and events, and importantly, the Fringe box office. Inside the Spiegel Tent, we hold nightly shows that we, the Fringe, curate. These shows range from circus acts to late night comedy and to the ever-popular silent disco. Located throughout the East End, the Neighborhood of the Arts, and in other sections of Rochester, the venues host the vast majority of the Fringe shows, and these are the venues that you can submit your show to. A full list of this year's venues is available at Fringe Backstage, located at backstage.rochesterfringe.com. In the past, venues have included Writers and Books, the Lyric Theater, Blackfriars Theater, the Eastman School of Music, Java's, School of the Arts, Jiva Theater Center, and many, many more. The list of venues changes every year and features a wide variety of stages and spaces to accommodate small or large performances and any idea imaginable. Fringe is also a fantastic way to perform a site-specific or a site-responsive show in a non-traditional space. This could be anything from plays that occur in parked cars, to a musical in a hot tub, to a dance performance outside a parking garage, and anything in between. If you have an idea for a site-specific show, please choose site-specific as the venue you apply to during the application process. So how do you submit your show to one of these venues at the KeyBank Rochester Fringe Festival? Well, you'll need to go to Fringe Backstage at backstage.rochesterfringe.com and make a free account. You'll want to gather some of your materials ahead of time, as you'll need the name of your show, a synopsis, details on cast and crew size, technical information, and if your show has existed before, any photos, videos, or links to reviews that you have. It's completely free to apply to Rochester Fringe, and we're one of the few fringes in the country without an application fee. Venues will begin reviewing applications immediately, and if they want to make you an offer, they will contact you directly. Similar to the process of applying to college, you may find that you have received offers from multiple venues, and you'll have to make a decision. These offers from the venues will include a variety of information on financial deals, the dates and times that they propose that you perform, and a suggested ticket price. An important note is that one of the Fringe's rules is that each show may only perform at one venue. As a performer, you can be in many shows performing in many different venues, but we don't want the same production of Hamlet bopping around to different venues every night. Once you've settled on a deal with a venue, 
Then it's time to actually register with the Fringe. Registration requires that you have an offer from a venue and for you to pay a registration fee. The registration fee depends on how many performances your show will have, how many seats the venue has, and whether your show is ticketed or a free event. To help artists get the most out of their Rochester Fringe experience, we have some of the lowest Fringe registration fees in the country. See the costs page at backstage.rochesterfringe.com for more information. There are many important dates as part of the lead up to Fringe in September, including when submissions close, when registration fees are due, and when show photos and descriptions are due. These can all be found at backstage.rochesterfringe.com. In order to submit your show to the Fringe, you'll first need to sign up for a free account at backstage.rochesterfringe.com. You'll receive a confirmation email to your inbox. Make sure you go to your inbox and click the link so that you can log in. First of all, if you had a Backstage account from a previous year, when you log in to backstage.rochesterfringe.com, you'll see a header that says Yearly Update. You'll then decide whether you want to keep your application from last year or you want all new information. If you keep last year's application information, you just type in confirm. If not, then you'll be basically starting from scratch, which is okay as well. Right, so the first thing you're going to do is you're going to click on application. You'll enter your show title, the genre of your show, information on your production company if you have one, a synopsis, how long your show lasts, etc., etc. Scroll all the way down to the bottom of the application and you'll see an area to upload photos. In order to upload a photo, you're going to click on Set Photo 1 and then you can drag and drop or click to upload an image. In order to add the image to your application, you'll need to click again on the actual image that you want and then at the bottom, you'll click on Use This File. You can also add video links if you have them, although this is not required and review links. At the very bottom, you'll see Save Changes and click to save. If you have errors, they'll come up in red and then you'll fix the errors and go back down to the bottom again and click on Save Changes. Now, in order for your application to go through to the venues, this is very important. At the top, you need to click on Submit to Venues. When you're on the Venues page, you can see all the different venues that are currently accepting applications. You can click on the venue itself and see what the venue's like. For example, you can sometimes see photos, you can see a text spec of the venues, you can see how many seats it has, et cetera, et cetera. In order to submit to that venue, make sure you click on the button below the venue that says submit to this venue. You can submit to as many venues as you like, but you need to do each one one at a time. After you've submitted to the venue, you'll receive a confirmation email in your inbox saying that your application has gone through to that venue. Your venue manager is now considering your application. You'll be getting an email alert every time this happens, but you can also see this information right at the top, number four, offers. In order to accept a venue's offer, you're going to click on the information that is listed under action. You'll be able to accept, or pass on the venue's offer. After you've done that, then you'll go through to registration. During the registration process, this is when you can pay your registration fee. You can pay automatically via PayPal, which also accepts debit and credit cards, or you can click on pay by invoice and we'll send you an invoice. After you've paid your registration fee, then you'll click on number six, guide details. This is where you're going to upload your guide photo. All guide photos are cropped to a square, so please upload a photo that you'd like to crop to a square shape. You're also going to enter in a description of your show. That information is going to go directly to the guide and to the website. After that information is finished, your venue will also add in your performance or event times and dates. You'll be able to see this information under number seven, schedule. You'll also receive an automatic alert in your inbox when these performances or events are scheduled. You've now applied to the Fringe, you've been accepted, you've got your marketing details in, and it's time to start rehearsing or preparing for your exhibit. We wish you the best of luck, break a leg, and we'll see you in September.